We're now going to extend our discussion about probability to not just one event, but multiple events. You know, compound and conditional events. Uh, so before we get too far into this, there's a very important concept, uh, which is whether the events are independent or dependent. Uh, so an example of independent events might be uh, rolling of two dice, where clearly uh, the result of the second roll really doesn't depend on the result of the first roll. First roll, you could get a three. Second roll is an independent event, uh, and it doesn't really matter what happened in the first roll. Uh, an example of dependent events might be uh, drawing two cards from a deck without replacing the first draw. And if you think about this for a moment, uh, the without replacing the first draw is uh, particularly important because, of course, if you replace the first draw, then actually the two events become independent because uh, all the cards would be there, uh, especially if it was reshuffled. Uh, the second draw would have the same probabilities as the first draw. But without replacing the first draw, Say on the first draw, you get a king of hearts. Well, on the second draw, is the king of hearts available? Could you draw the king of hearts? The answer is no, because you already drew it. The number of cards themselves goes from 52 cards down to 51 cards. So the denominator of your relative frequency changes. Um, and so uh, the calculation is different for the second draw than the first draw. Uh, so those would be dependent events. Uh, now, the next important distinction uh, is whether our multiple events uh, all have to happen or whether uh, only one has to happen. This is the classic and or or which I can show you an example of. An example of uh, both events happening might be rolling two dice and getting both fives, two fives. Uh, uh, maybe if you are drawing cards, um, for this video, I'll probably use those examples uh, almost exclusively. What's the probability of getting a king of hearts and a three of clubs? Uh, both events have to happen to be your successful event. Uh, now, in the or case, either event could happen. It's a different calculation. What's the probability of getting a king of hearts or a three of clubs? Uh, that's going to be a, a different probability. It's going to be a different calculation. Uh, what's, you know, if you roll two dice, a uh, classic example is uh, if you add them together, what's the probability of the sum being five or six? So it's one or the other, right? Uh, when we deal with uh, ands, uh, both events happening, then this is actually the multiplication rule in which we're going to be multiplying the probabilities. And for the or, this is going to be the addition rule. And I'm going to go through some examples. Uh, it gets a little complicated because we have uh, and and or, and we also have independent and dependent so there are a number of combinations that we have to worry about. Uh, and when we talk about, uh, let's get back to this screen. So when we talk about and, right, could be independent or dependent, right, the events. When we talk about the or, uh, we can talk about being 
mutually exclusive or not mutually exclusive. And so there's going to be, and, and these are similar to independent dependent. Now, mutually exclusive uh, could be, can you draw both uh, a king or an ace? Well, those are mutually exclusive because you can't draw a king and an ace in one draw. Now, mut not mutually exclusive is could I draw a king and a diamond? Well, could you draw a king of diamond? Yes. They're not mutually exclusive. They can both exist in one draw. So that's not mutually exclusive. So what we're going to do is go through some examples of essentially all four of these. Right? The, the and with its two variations and the or with its two variations. Here's how I'm going to show it. We're doing the and. So these are the events that both happen. An independent example and a dependent example. Right? Both of these are going to be the multiplication rule because when both events have to happen, we multiply the probabilities. The example for independent, what's the probability for rolling fives on both dice you throw? Well, they're independent, so what's the probability of uh, getting a five? Well, for dice, there are, of course, six sides on the dice, one through six. Five is just one of them. So the probability is going to be one-sixth. And so the probability of five and five is simply going to be one-sixth times one-sixth. So probability of five and five is one-thirty-sixth. Now, I'm going to show you some visualizations that might help uh, with understanding this. Uh, and first of all, with two dice, uh, it's relatively easy to see the sample space. Uh, let's switch screens. Uh, quality of this isn't great, but uh, you can see this is actually our sample space. It's all possible outcomes. Uh, we can get the first die is 1, 2, 3, 5, 6. Second die is all 1. And you can see it's just very logical. First one is always 1 through 6, and then it just increments the second one up to 6. Uh, and those are all the possible combinations. Well, there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 rows, 6 columns. Each one is a different combination. Of course, there are 36 total possible outcomes. And two fives happens only once out of all the possible combinations. So you can see where the one out of 36 comes from. Now, another way of visualizing this uh, is actually with a Venn diagram. Right, which is a very nice way of uh, distinguishing uh, the and and the or, by the way. So here is the first dice roll. Uh, we'll say that's event A. So this is the probability of getting a five on the first roll. Uh, and this, of course, is one sixth. Right. Well, the probability of getting five on the second roll is event B. It actually, circles should be the same size. Um, here's five on 
Second roll, which is also one sixth. Well, what's the probability of getting five on both? Is the union. Right. It has to be both in the first and the second. They both they both happened. Uh, so that's a nice little visualization of uh, the and uh, for uh, actually both independent and dependent uh, events. So uh, let's move to the dependent example. What's the probability for drawing two aces from a well shuffled deck without replacement? So uh, we're going to need what's the probability of the first event? Uh, ace on first draw. Well, how many aces are there in the deck? There are four. Out of how many cards? There are 52 in the deck. So it's going to be four out of 52. Now what's the probability of getting the ace on second draw? Well, that kind of depends. Uh, depends on what happened in the first draw. Because if an ace got drawn in the first one, well, how many aces are left? There are three. But if an ace wasn't drawn in the first one, how many aces are there? There are four. So in fact, we kind of have to uh, change uh, how we wrote this out for a moment. And it'll look something like this. What's the probability of getting an ace on the second draw given there was an ace on the first draw? But there's going to be a, another one of these, which is going to read, what's the probability of getting an ace on the first given that there was no ace on the second? So if an ace was drawn on the first, then there are three aces left out of now 51 cards. But if no ace was drawn on the first, then there are four aces left out of the 51 cards. So those probabilities are a little different. And we have what's called conditional probability. We really have two. And we won't know which one until after the first draw. Right? If the first draw is uh, an ace, then we're going to combine these two. If the first draw isn't an ace, we're going to combine that one and that one. All right, so now uh, I hope you weren't taking uh, really good notes because uh, I had a choice to make. Uh, I could start over and uh, redo this video, uh, or I could just admit that I made a mistake. Um, of course, what I was thinking of is, in fact, the next one, the or. Um, this isn't an option if it's an and, right? If both events have to happen, then of course that one's not a possibility. Uh, it's the or uh, which I was thinking about. So that makes this actually uh, easier right? because really we're asked for what's the probability of ace and ace, right? The first one has to be an ace because that's what we were asked to do, two aces. Um, which is going to be for 50 seconds times three 50 firsts, uh, which the probability of both ace and ace uh, is equal to 12 out of 2,652. Uh, which is approximately equal to 0 0.0045. So it's going to be less than 1%, 0.45% chance uh, of pulling two aces from one deck without replacement. Uh, and again, you can look at this as a Venn diagram. Right. Here's ace on first, here's probability for ace on the second, and 
this is going to be 4 out of 52. Now, here, if we were being really uh, particular, the size of the circles are actually a little bit different because this is 51 cards versus 52 cards. Um, but it, this is just a visualization, really. Uh, and this 0 0.0045 is this union of the two circles. So that's the and, uh, which is multiplication rule. Uh, you just multiply the two probabilities together. Now let's move on to the or. And as I said before, its variations are when it's mutually exclusive or not mutually exclusive. The examples for these would be, and you can see I'm using the examples that I gave earlier. You know, mutually exclusive, what's the probability of drawing a jack or a king? You can't draw both, it has to be one or the other. But here, we have the dr probability of drawing a king or a diamond. Well, that's a little bit more complicated, uh, as I foreshadowed a little bit by mi my mistake uh, with the and, um, that we have to figure out uh, some other probabilities. One way of visualizing this, we'll use the Venn diagram first. That is, I think, helpful. Uh, and I didn't really describe this earlier, but this box around the two circles is actually important. It actually represents right, the sample space. Right, we have our 52 cards, uh, so actually sample space, because we're only drawing one card. Right? 52 possible cards could be drawn. Well, how many are jacks? And that's one, there are of course four. And it's mutually exclusive so that there is going to be no union in the Venn diagram. Uh, how many kings are there? Well, there are four kings. Circles should be the same size. So, probability of getting a jack or a king would be four fifty seconds plus four fifty seconds. Which conveniently they already have common denominator, so it'd be eight fifty seconds, uh, which can be reduced uh, to two thirteenths, uh, or is approximately point one five four as a relative frequency, so fifteen point four percent chance of getting a jack or a king. It's a little over fifteen percent. Not bad. Uh, if we kind of draw this out, uh, the addition rule would really look like probability of a jack, getting a jack, plus probability of getting a king. Right, it would look something like that. That's a jack. <laughs> um, now if we talk about a mutually, uh, not a mutually exclusive uh, situation, uh, which in a lot of ways, this is, they're kind of independent and dependent. It's somewhat similar in concept. So what's the Venn diagram gonna look like for this? All right, now we have our sample space, which is 52, of course. Uh, now we can have a king Right, and there are of course four kings. Right, we can have a diamond, but there is a possibility of having both. So there is going to be a union between these two. There are thirteen diamonds in a pack, and there are four kings in the pack. But remember, there's one which is both the king of diamonds. So if you wanted to figure out the probability, if we look back over at the mutually exclusive example, then you can think of this as here's kind of the area 
of the circles. And what we did is we added, we summed the area. Now, what we want to do uh, is, what's the area inside this perimeter? That's really what we are looking for. So we can't just add 4 and 13, right? It's not 17, because we would be adding this area twice. That's the problem. So if we did this symbolically first, probability of king or diamond, really that would be the probability of getting a king plus the probability of getting a diamond. I'm going to abbreviate a little bit. But we're going to have to take away the probability of king and diamond. Remember that this union comes all the way from here when we did the and, that gets us this union of the two circles. So if we don't want to count this twice, we have to get rid of it. We have to subtract at least one of them. So uh, in this case, right, we have probability of king or diamond would be 4 out of 52 plus 13 out of 52 minus 1 out of 52, because there's only one uh, king and diamond, the king of diamonds. So we have king or diamond, right? Would end up being not 17, but 16, 50 seconds, which is approximately 0.3. 308, or almost 31% chance of getting either a king or a diamond. Um, because a full, you know, uh, there are four suits, right? Diamond, hearts, clubs, and spades. And so diamonds is 25% of the pack. And then you have to throw in a couple of kings that aren't diamonds, and that bumps it up to almost 31%. And so that's uh, the, the or. Uh, now, the next thing that uh, I need to talk about uh, is conditional probability, uh, which is uh, very interesting and kind of a long example. So instead of continuing this video, I think I might make it conditional the next video.